Hi guys, we're in the shed on a hot sunny day on Hailing Island and um, I'm working on uh, a new plane, cutting some ailerons for it. Um, Rob's got a parcel which arrived this morning and um, he's itching to open it, so Rob! Yes, we're itching. What's in the bag? Itching. What's in the bag? <laughs> Here it is. It's uh, it's arrived um, through the post. Um, I bought it um, off somebody on uh, Facebook, uh, and it, it took me back to my to my youth of the nineteen uh, eighties. Oh, back in the day. And uh, yeah, back in the day. So I thought, you know what? I'm gonna buy it. So I did. What you got? Shall I open it? Yeah, I can't wait. This is the start, anyway, of a new series we're going to be doing. Mm. Mm. A bag in a bag. It's a Digifleet proportional radio control system. Mm. Built and designed in the UK and manufactured in the UK uh, in Fleet in Hampshire. Mm. And they used to have a little model shop um, and a repair shop in Fleet. Many people will know it from the UK. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, so, oh bugger, it's upside down, the lid's missing. So, there it is. Oh, that's yes. what it looks like. I used to have one of those. So did I. Back in the day. Never used to have many planes then. No, just the one. Because they're all broken. They are. <laughs> Thanks to this radio yes. control system. Good old 35 meg. Oh. Ooh, got some um, screws. Got a few bits and pieces. Don't look as though they've been used, which probably was quite sensible, actually. Yeah. Because, um, yeah, your plane would be in bits. Look at the size of those servos. So, here it is. This is a Digifleet radio control system. PFM, so it's a normal FM one. It's not the uh, it's not the PCM version. 35 megahertz. And I think this is the six channel. Let's have a look. Oh, very nice. Do you know what? It's smaller than I remember. Smaller than I remember. It's nice good oh look, one. battery almost worked then. It's in good condition, isn't it? Doesn't look like it's been used. To no. be honest with you. I'll tell you what, it smells of... Oh, I'll get a screwdriver with it as well. Oh, excellent. Um, better than the Hobby King screwdrivers. Better than the Hobby King screwdriver. Yeah, so... There it is. This is what we used to have to struggle to fly with back in the day. Mm. A couple of aileron and rudder. You can flick in and out. An adjustment for the mixing. It's got tick-over adjustment. Uh-huh. Um, really designed for power, obviously, mm -hmm. and an uh, extra channel switch, channel 5 or 6 there. Um, mechanical trims, mm -hmm. and two extra channels, or mixing, or whatever you wanted, I think, on that. I can't really remember now, it's so long since I've had one. Um, Very well built. Now, to configure this, as you can see, there's no display. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what you've got... Oh yeah. All right. Is some mixer switches, a few little bit of mixing, and you can you can set your um, the uh, your servo uh, end limits using these pots, and you can also reverse them as well. Um, got a dual rate up here as well. You can adjust. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's a charging port and buddy port. No din plug. Yeah, the old din plug. Crystal in there. This is on 85. Mm -hmm. Just plugs in. Yeah, there she is. I can't remember what colour that is, but hmm. orange. Orange. 35 meg didn't have colours. Oh right. It was 27 that had colours. Oh right, you have to change your um. Yeah. Okay, so that's the basic radio. I mean, do you know what? It looks like it's never been used. Mm. Um, so, what we are thinking we're going to do is we're going to try and use this as is. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, 
and see how it performs. Mm -hmm. And then I think we're going to convert it or convert the transmitter to 2.4. Hmm. So you get the retro style usage of the transmitter. Yeah. With uh, the reliability of 2.4. Yeah. Sounds good. Um, we will see. Yeah. Um, we'll see how good this performs. Uh, let's have a look at what else we get. We get some nice servos, yeah. Um, they've never been used again. Here we go. And uh, they were they were well engineered for their time. Oh yeah. Um, this is an FPS 17. In fact, they're all FPS 17s. There was a whole series of different servos. Um, here is the receiver with an aerial that's never been used. Yeah. Because <laughs> nobody wires them up like that, do they? No. <laughs> On the factory. Um, yeah, seven channel receiver. High performance. Oh, yeah. So that's got to be good. Yeah. Crystal in here. There you go. Now remember, if you wanted to change frequency back in the day, you had to put a different set of crystals in. Yeah. And uh, what was it? Probably 10, 15 quid a time, wasn't it? For a different set of crystals. Something like that, yeah. <clears throat> Crazy. Uh, you get your little flag for your frequency when you had pegboards and all that kind of crap. Yeah. Um, little flag, it's meant to clip on your aerial. Like that. There you go. People can see you're on 85 yeah. and not shoot you down. That's right. But all the old geezers never used to look and used to turn on anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then that was it. You uh, you had a, a plastic bag full of bits. Comes with a battery. Brand mm. new. Brand new. Now Fleet used a slightly different connector to everybody else. Mm. And it was that it was that thing there. Um I can't remember who made this connector now. So long ago, it might be mm. amp or something like that. Mm. But uh, yeah, um, so all your servos have this weird connector on as well. Get a switch harness. Beautiful. Unless there's the other end of your uh, your connector. It is polarised, mm -hmm. so it'll only go one way. And it's latching as well. Excellent. Got in here. Get it comes with an extension lead. You get one extension lead, and you get another servo. Same again, FPS 17. These used to be not too bad. These servos. And in fact, I've still got some f old fleet bits and pieces like servos and stuff like that, knocking around in my um, scrap drawer. Hmm. So you know, I should be able to have a full set of uh, of gear. Now this is a bit of a mystery. Yeah, what's going on? There? That is a oh bloody hell! Look at that. That is a Fleet Control Systems uh, ESC. Oh right. I think an FPS 27A throw and adjust. Let's have a look. Yeah. We could be going well retro with this. Never seen one of those before. No. Yeah, it's a speed controller. So it's a brushed speed controller. Mm-hmm. I would think. Um, up to 28 cells, which is um, NICAD or nickel metal hydride, not LiPo. Yeah. Um, 33.6 volts current, 125 amps max, uh, 36 amps short bursts, and 28 amps continuous. Hey. So, oh, that's the 27A, isn't it? Yeah, that's the one we've got. Uh, there was another one which did up to 60 amps. So there you go. So it comes with that as well. Excellent. With a nice bit of chop block going on. Oh, and a Tamiya connector. And an inline fuse. Oh, yeah. And a switch. <laughs> they, oh. they thought of it. And I'll tell you what, that weighs a ton, that. Uh, yeah, OK, so there we get that as well. Uh, and then we get the charger, the classic charger. Uh -huh. Fleet 
made these chargers for years. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. There you go. Took um, overnight to charge, basically, because mm -hmm. it only charged at 50 milliamps. Mm -hmm. It had a wonderful connector for the uh, for the receiver battery charging, which is that. Mm. Yeah, and uh, basically the thing went together like that. There's no way you can get that the wrong way around. No way you can get that the wrong way around. There you go. Nice. So, I'm sure for a lot of people out there, that is a bit of a blast from the past. Yeah. Uh, and I'm sure a lot of those people are going, don't put that in a plane. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we will. Yeah. Um, uh, because, you know, I want, A, I want to see if my memories of uh, what the fleet was like is actually true, mm. or whether it was me at the time, you know? Uh, because these were renowned for crashing planes. Mm. Um, you know, you just lose signal, the thing would like flip in, bang. Mm. I want to see if that's really true or whether it was, you know, a bit of a fallacy. Well, we've got a retro plane to actually put all the Yeah, in, I'm we? thinking of putting it into the Super 60 actually with the diesel. Yeah, we've so, got a Super 60 down there. Um, which, we'll we'll uh, see. We'll, um, we'll, we'll check all the gear out, we'll put it on charge, see if the NICADs are actually alright. Um, yeah, this actually has another quick feature. This has eight AA cell NICADs in it. Um, and they're all along the bottom. There's, there's four AA cells that side, and <clears throat> four AA cells that side. Mm -hmm. um, which we'll probably need replacing, but we'll see. I don't know how old they are. Um, but. You know what? That smells like new. Have a smell, Cole. See if you remember that smell. Yeah, it's a smell. That is a smell of fleet control systems, and it wasn't just burnt out electronics. That smells like new it electronics. Is. It is. It's brand new. It's gorgeous. Um, the only thing it doesn't get is a neck strap. Um, you get a neck strap holder um, but, or clip, but you don't get the neck strap. I think I might actually have a my old neck strap at home. You can have. Oh, excellent. Yeah. I think I've got a Turnergy one. Yeah. Um, yeah, so there you go, people. Retro. Um, oh, yeah, feel those springs. <laughs> quality. So, yeah, mm. there you go. That is quality for the day. So, yeah, we'll, um, we'll, we'll, we'll put this on charge, actually, and see what happens. Yeah. See if um, the, the cells come up okay or not. Um, and, and, and come back to you, probably. Yeah, okay, sounds good. So we put the radio on charge uh, overnight and um, the capacity was well down of the batteries. So there was only one option and that was to replace them. Uh, what you had inside the transmitter was two of these. Um, they're basically AA batteries in a pack of four and there's two of them. They sit there and there inside the radio. Um, so I bought uh, Eight more batteries with tags on, made up two new four cell packs and uh, installed them in here. Now these are originally 600 milliamp hour um, uh, NICADs and um, I've replaced them with 2500 milliamp hour uh, nickel metal hydrides. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll get a much longer life. Uh, flying time, well or usability time on these was about the two hours so obviously we've probably uh, tripled that now mm -hmm. um, so you know you can have a good probably weeks worth of flying can't you on uh, on one charge so we've replaced the batteries in here um, I've not done anything with this battery pack this battery packs the same the performance is well down and I've cycled it a few times and it's not getting any better but we're not going to be using that uh, receiver pack anyway we'll probably be using a you know, on either an ESC or a, or a separate uh, a separate back. So let's power it up and, uh, and and see how it works, shall we? Yeah. So we'll turn the transmitter on. Nice red light. No doubting that's on. Notice the analog needle. Let me just turn that off. Turn that back on. Lovely analog needle. And also, what, you, what I didn't show before was the here. You've got uh, these are dual rates. So elevator and aileron, uh, and when you flick them in, you get a beautiful red LED. 
mm. to show that your dual rates are in. Right, so transmitter's on, and we'll switch on the receiver. There she goes, and uh, we've got beautiful moving servos. None of this horrible digital crap. <laughs> All nice and analog. <laughs> um, yeah, infinite steps you get on these analog radios. So much finer than the, than uh, than some of the digital stuff that's out there. So. In conclusion, it all works um, on the bench. Mm -hmm. uh, so the next thing we'll be doing, this will be another video, or next thing we will do, mm -hmm. um, is put it into a plane of some description. Yeah. Um, what that will be, I don't know. But like I said, it will probably be the, uh, the Super 60. Yeah. So, there you go. Like, comment, subscribe. Uh, and uh, yeah, we'll see you in another uh, another video. Okay then. Yeah, it's goodbye from him. And it's a uh, goodbye from me. There you go. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs>